Hey everyone, Jonathan Bradley here, manager of King Social Media, and I am joined today by the fourth overall pick in the 2022 NBA Draft and the newest member of the Sacramento Kings, Keegan Murray. How you doing? I'm doing good. Can't complain. Can't good. Complain. Well, we're happy to have you here. Happy that you're in SAC. I'm going to hop right in if you don't mind. Sounds good. Sounds good. Great. So how would you explain what it was like hearing your name called on draft night? And what does it mean to you to be a member of the Sacramento Kings? It was a surreal experience. Um, growing up, um, I always played 2K a lot. And you go on, the, on that my player mode and you'd have the draft and stuff like that. And I just dreamed about being in the NBA. Uh, so to hear my name, have my family be there with me was a dream come true. Um, and I'm honored to have this opportunity. Uh, with the Sacramento Kings, I feel like it's the perfect fit for me um, and have a great career here. So. I'm excited to join uh, the Sacramento Kings uh, with their new coaching staff and a lot of great players. Awesome. So take us back to the beginning. Who taught you the game of basketball and who really instilled your work ethic when it comes to the game? My dad, um, throughout elementary school, middle school, junior high, high school, he was my only skills trainer. I'm the only guy that I'd work with. Um, I felt like it was cool for me because he kind of separated coach and dad um, and that was a really cool experience for me just to learn from him. And, um, I feel like just having that hardworking mentality um, after the, those AU weekends, just getting in the gym um, after those long weekends and keep putting in that work, um, I feel like uh, I can attribute my success to him. So you had the rare opportunity to play college basketball with your twin brother. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about the dynamic between you two, just going back to your early days of hooping in the driveway all the way through college basketball. I mean, the chemistry was there. Um, <laughs> clearly uh, throughout the season. Um, it's rare to see siblings or even twins be playing uh, basketball with each other at the Power Five level. So that was really special for both of us. Um, and we both had a really good year this year. So um, I think just the chemistry on the court um, is for us is second to none. Um, I think whenever he was on the court, it made me better. Um, so uh, I feel like he'll have a really good year next year and I'll have a good this year this year. How would you describe your personal basketball journey and what are some things that you've learned along the way about yourself? Yeah, so growing up, I was 5'10", 5'11", sophomore year of high school, I ended up growing to 6'7", my senior year. Um, and out of high school, I had one Division one offer, um, but the coach ended up leaving um, and a bunch of the players left to the transfer portal. So I was contemplating um, junior college, which was the option that I really wanted to go to. Um, but I ended up going to a post-grad school down in uh, Florida. Um, I feel like just that humbleness, um, that time in my life where I had no clue what I was doing on um, my senior year in April, um, which was really late, um, where I was going to go to school. I feel like just that feeling um, will always be stuck inside me, that hunger um, to get to where I want to be and where I am right now um, will always be with me. So you referenced previously in your career that you, you know, had a chip on your shoulder. Talk about where that chip originated and how do you think that that's fueled your game? Yeah, I think it's just from the people that uh, I feel like have dabbed me throughout my whole life. I mean, when I got to Iowa, the first question I was asked by a reporter was, are you, are you gonna be a walk-on? Mm -hmm. So that kinda just fueled me even more. Um, and I feel like my hard work, um, I, I never knew when it, was gonna, when it was gonna work out for me, but I knew if I worked hard, something would turn out good. Um, and uh, so it just so happened to be a couple years later, so. What excites you most about this Sacramento Kings team and how do you think you can help this squad take the next step? Yeah, I think it's a fresh team um, with Sabonis uh, coming here midway through the season, uh, Fox, a dynamic point guard, David Mitchell, a really good defender, um, DiVincenzo, Harrison Barnes, um, guys like that. Um, I feel like the roster, the roster set up for success um, and also with uh, a whole new coaching staff, I feel like the roster is just set up for success and I feel like we're at the point where um, it's time to turn the corner and I'm ready uh, to be a part of that. You have a reputation for having a strong work ethic, professionalism. How did you develop those characteristics and how do you think that they help you on and off the court? Yeah, I think for me it was really maturing. Um, when I was in high school, um, I kind of have that mentality where I wear everything on my shoulder um, and uh, my emotions would fluctuate high and low and I felt like that wasn't really good for me. So throughout the years I kind of matured um, and kind of had that mindset where um, if things are going bad, um, keep that mindset um, that they'll end up going good. If things are going hot, good and you're at the highest point, um, never forget when you're at your lowest. So um, I just feel like that mindset has kind of took me um, as far um, as I've come today. So I'm, I feel like it just works for me.
You mentioned humility and being humble earlier. So I'm not sure if you know, but you had one of the three most efficient seasons for a volume score in college basketball history. And you were the only player this season with 50 dunks and 50 threes. What do those type of accolades mean to you? Yeah, I think that just shows that I'm versatile um, on the court. Uh, my teammates got me involved. I was able to do a lot of stuff um, around the arc um, and also at the basket. So that just shows my versatility. Um, and obviously that comes with being able to play a lot of minutes. So I was able to play 35, 40 minutes a game. Um, and uh, that just comes with my conditioning and uh, my work ethic just to get better every single day. So we mentioned the dunks and the threes and you've shown the ability to not only put up big numbers, but also make clutch plays. How much do you relish being the go-to guy when the game is on the line? For me, having the ball in my hands at the end of the game, uh, I'll live with the results. Um, I know that um, if the ball is in my hands at the end of the game, um, I feel like I have the confidence I'm gonna make the shot, make the layup, whatever it is, make the game winning play. Um, so for me, I can live with, live with the hate if uh, things don't go right. So um, that's just the confidence I have in myself. And then looking ahead to, you know, finally putting on a Kings uniform, what are some of your goals for your rookie season? For my rookie season, uh, the main thing is winning. Um, I, I will do whatever it takes to win. I know there's 82 games in a season, um, so those could be off nights. There's going to be really, really good nights. So it's balancing those and um, figuring out what it takes to win uh, every single night. Um, and also, um, obviously, getting to the playoffs, doing damage in the playoffs. Um, I feel like um, if I can achieve those team goals, the individual goals and accolades will come. So for me, it's just putting the team first and having that winning mindset. Are there any current or past NBA players that you would say that you modeled your game after or that you would compare yourself to? There's bits and pieces of different people. I think for this year, Chris Milton has been a guy that I've watched a lot um, just because um, he was underappreciated uh, first coming into the league, ended up being, becoming an NBA champion and all-star. So um, we're both, I feel like, around the same size. Um, and. I feel like his versatility is something I want to bring on the court in the NBA. Um, and I'm just, I, I just try to uh, learn as much as I can from different people. What was it like for you to have the chance to meet and have dinner with Fox and Sabonis before the draft? And how do you think that your game complements theirs? Yeah, I think it was special, especially for them to bring them in and uh, just talk with me. I feel like it, it was really easy to talk to them about different things. And I think for me to play alongside them, um, I feel like they're both dynamic in their own way. Um, and I can blossom um, with them and uh, Sabonis has proven to be an all-star. Fox is uh, on the verge of being and he's a really great player. So I know that um, the, the, the more chemistry I have um, and build with them through the offseason, uh, the better it will be. Speaking of dinner, what's your favorite meal? My favorite meal, uh, I, I, go, I gotta go with wings, generic. Generic? generic? Yeah, whatever wings. Whatever wings. <laughs> yeah, Excellent. Yeah. And when you're not playing basketball, what do you like to do in your free time? I'm a big golfer, so I golf, I golf a lot on uh, my free time. Uh, it's just a kind of a way to kind of escape everything, escape all the noise, stuff like that, and just hang out with friends. Awesome. Do you have a favorite book? Favorite book? Uh, I'd probably say Bleeding Orange by Jim Beheim. Nice. Yep. And are you streaming anything currently on Netflix or Hulu or? Uh, my favorite, my favorite show is The Blacklist on Netflix. Uh, it's a, it's a long series, but it's, it's really good. So, who would you say is your favorite musical artist right now? Rod Wave. Rod yep, Wave. I, I, I love Rod Wave. Yep. <laughs> Can you give us a little Rod Wave right now? Uh, shoot. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's see. That's all good. That's all good. And uh, so you have your family here with you in Sacramento. They also joined you in, in, in New York for the draft. What does their support mean to you? It means a lot, um, just knowing that I have family members um, at the draft and also back at home um, that support me on um, what I do. And for me, I like to keep a close circle. So the people that are here um, with me today um, are the people that uh, I resemble the most and appreciate the most. Nice. So you grew up in Iowa, went to college in Iowa. What does it mean to you to represent Iowa in the NBA? Yeah, I think it's special. Um, these last uh, last year we had two guys get drafted from the University of Iowa and this year myself. So I feel like the Iowa basketball program has kind of been underappreciated. Um, it's not the flashiest program in the world, but we get the job done. I feel like we've done that these last two years and I'm just excited for what the future holds. Nice. So at the draft, you supported two organizations with your NBA draft cufflinks. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about those organizations and why it was important for you to support them. Yeah, so Living Undeterred um, is an organization. Uh, my best friend, Ian Johnson, his dad, Jeff Johnson, started um, for drug, drug abuse um, and uh, just mental health awareness. Um, he's had 
a couple of people in his family that have um, been uh, the cause, um, and drugs have caused their, their lives to end. Um, so for me, it's getting that out there um, and uh, just spreading the word because it's a Cedar Rapids program. They're actually going on tour around the 50 states uh, right now. Um, they're on the East Coast right now, just going around um, to all the 50 states, talk about mental awareness um, and just getting their message out there. And then the LBA Foundation is also a uh, nonprofit organization in the Cedar Rapids area um, that my dad's been a part of um, since I was in middle school and I was a part of since middle school. And uh, they really, it's a, for the Cedar Rapids uh, public schools, the kids in the public schools, uh, for them to get outside of their regular lives, do different things, um, sporting events, uh, different clinics, activities, um, just to get them out, out and about um, and in the right mindset. Um, they also give, give them uh, school supplies and things like that. So for me, it's just bringing that message onto a national stage. That's awesome. So I got one more question for you. Uh, you know, when you look down the line, when it's all said and done, you spent 15 years in Sacramento. Yeah. <laughs> How do you want your career to be remembered? As a winner, um, a guy that the community really cares about, um, but also on the court, a guy that's changed this organization around. Um, I know that for me, I want to be a part of uh, the success here, and that's a really big thing for me. So, um, and I, I'm a guy that's a really big community guy. I love hanging out with fans, um, also uh, teaching the younger, younger community um, what it's like to be an NBA player and just giving them knowledge. So for me, it's about uh, the things on the court and off the court. That's awesome. Well, that's excellent to hear. I'm sure the fans will be happy to hear that. That's all I got for you today, but we appreciate your time. We're happy that you're here in Sacramento. Uh, for Keegan, I'm Jonathan Bradley. Go Kings. Go Kings.